I have been on YouTube for over a year and I recently hit 5,000 subscribers, which firstly, thank you all so much. I generally thought this channel would flop when I first started, so your love and support really mean a lot to me. And whilst you know a lot about my book opinions, I realise that you guys don't really know actually a lot about me. And I get frequently asked the same questions in the comments and I thought, why not do a video just answering them? So I put a poll up for a Q&A and loads of you replied. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen me before, hello, I'm Katerina. I don't usually talk about myself. I actually make videos on books and if that's something you're into, why do you consider subscribing? Okay, so we're going to start with the basics. These are just the general questions of who I am as a person. So the very first question is, where are you from? So I was born in York, which is a town in the north of the UK, but I've actually been living in London for the past three, four years, which is why my accent is a bit of a weird mix of both. You can hear the Yorkshireness come out on like certain words. However, in terms of where I'm originally from, because I get asked about my ethnicity quite often, I'm actually a mix of Iraqi and Ukrainian, specifically three quarters Iraqi and one quarter Ukrainian, which I know is a bizarre mix. I actually get really surprised reactions from people all the time when I tell them this. It's also quite fun being racially ambiguous, like no one's ever guessed correctly where I'm from, so maybe one day, but so far I'll leave them guessing. <laughs> Next question, do you have any siblings? Yes, I have one brother who is four years older than me. I don't know if I give off younger sister energy, you can let me know about that. Are you a coffee or a tea person? As much as I love coffee for its ability to keep me awake every day, I am just a tea girly at heart. I have an unbelievable amount of herbal tea in my kitchen cupboards. You know that one scene in Scott Pilgrim vs the World where Ramona is like listing a million different teas for Scott? That's literally me whenever my friends come over. Also, I'm British. I'm stereotypically required to love tea, otherwise they kick me out the country. How many countries have you traveled to? I have been to 18 countries, I think, if I've counted correctly, which I am so thankful for having the privilege and opportunity to travel. I really think that's made me a more curious and open person. And traveling is definitely something I would recommend to other people if you have the means to do so. What's your comfort meal? Honestly, anything with pasta. It hits the spot every single time. I love pasta so much to the point where me and one of my friends will go on dinner dates every single month to an Italian restaurant just so we can get our fix of pasta. Like, the obsession is real. Did you go to university and what did you study? I did go to university. I went to Newcastle University, which was an incredible place to go to. Again, I'm just genuinely so thankful that I got the opportunity to go there because it was honestly the best time of my life. I met some of the most amazing people there that I'm sure that I will be friends with until the day I die. And regarding my studies, this will actually surprise a lot of people, but I didn't do anything book or literature related. I actually studied law in my undergrad degree, which was really intense and boring, and I pretty much figured out immediately that I did not want to be a lawyer. I chose it because I knew it was like a solid degree, and it proves that I'm smart, which is ideal for job prospects, I guess. I then did a master's degree immediately afterwards in cross-cultural communications and international marketing, which turned out to be a lot more enjoyable. Are you working? What's your day job like? Is it book related? Yeah. Yes, I do work, unfortunately. I wish I was a full-time YouTuber, but a girl has to be realistic in this economy. Again, this may surprise people, but I don't do anything book or literature related as a job. I actually work at a law firm, which is the intense corporate job that I always seem to reference in my videos. But I'm not a lawyer. I work in business development, which basically means I help the lawyers win new work and clients. I get a lot of comments saying that I'm very eloquent and well-spoken, which I genuinely think is down to the job. Lawyer's time is money and you have to articulate yourself well enough in order to be heard. So I've just learned over time to speak very well. <laughs> but yeah, nothing book related. My love for reading is actually just purely based on hobbies. Okay, now we're going to be getting into the book related content. This next set of questions is going to be about my love for reading and books in more general terms. How did you get into literature slash reading? Honestly, since I was super young, I've always loved reading. I generally think it was the first interest I've had. And I definitely thank my parents for that because literally ever since I was a little girl, my parents took me to libraries and got me to check out books and read from a really young age. So shout out to mum and dad for introducing the first love of my life. Life. To be honest, my love for reading hasn't always been consistent. Like, I've kind of dipped in and out of reading throughout my life. For example, I was into it when I was a young child, and then I kind of fell out with it when I was an older child. But I think that's very much due to like the introduction of technology in my life. And then I was obsessed with it again when I was a young teenager and discovered young adult books, and then carried on with that until I was about 18 when I went to university. Because then my studies in reading got so intense that I just did not have the time to read recreationally. And then it was only a few years ago when I completely finished my studies that I got really into it again and I read crazy amount of books that I do 
do now. <laughs> Why did you start your YouTube channel? What was your motivation? I have been watching YouTubers since I was 12, 13 years old, which is crazy because that's literally over half my life. I'm a really creative person at heart. I love content creation and making a YouTube channel was something that I've always thought about doing, but I was never really sure what my videos would be about. And then I started reading books a couple of years ago and was seeing these online communities such as BookTube and BookTok and thought, hmm, maybe I can get into that. I honestly think moving to London was also a huge motivator for that as well because I was suddenly surrounded by this new group of people that were very inclined in content creation and being artistic and it just made the whole thing seem less intimidating in my head I was like well if you can do it why can't I I started out with very low expectations like generally I thought the channel would flop so I just thought let's see if I enjoy it and I'll give it six months and I'll just see where it goes and here we are over a year later and I thank you all for being here because I genuinely think I wouldn't have continued this if it wasn't for your love and support so thank you what are your hobbies beside reading? I love films. I guess that kind of goes hand in hand with reading. I always reference book to film adaptations in my videos because I genuinely love watching films. Like I literally go on solo dates to the cinema at least once a month because I love it so much. I'm also a sucker for plants, specifically house plants. I think I currently have around 30 plants in my flat. I literally treat them like my children. And like with books, I need to stop buying plants because this is going to be an absolute nightmare for me when I move. <laughs> Another hobby I have is journaling, but I guess it's kind of like scrap journaling. Like I'll make the pages look pretty because I like the artistic freedom in doing that, but I'm ultimately doing it to dump thoughts out of my head. I'll post some photos of like what these look like, but I'm blurring out the text because I literally write my deepest, darkest secrets in here and I'm not ready to put that on the internet. <laughs> but just so you can get a flavor of the thing, that I create. What is something on your bucket list? I would love to write a book one day. I have a few plot ideas in my head but I feel like I really want to write a book when I'm older because I feel like it will be better the more I experience a life, if that makes any sense. Like I just don't feel like I'm ready to write a book now. I need to go through more stuff in order to write a book well. But I really hope that I write a book before I die. That is something that would make me extremely happy. Okay and for the last section we're going to be moving on to the specific book questions. What is one book you think everyone would like? This is genuinely a hard question because so many people like so many different things but I guess a safe answer would be like the Harry Potter books I mean they're popular for a reason it is quite amazing though how both kids and adults can enjoy them both so much they just have such a unique quality to them and honestly I love the fantasy in them like I think people need to embrace fantasy and fiction books a little bit more however I would say if you're gonna read them get them from a library or buy them secondhand JK Rowling is hugely transphobic and we should not be funding her to spew more garbage on Twitter so yeah, love the books, but just a shame it's got such a terrible writer. What are three books that have changed your life slash had the most impact? Okay, first of these books I would say is Miracle in the Andes by Nando Parado. I read this book this year and I was a completely different person when I finished it. The way it altered my view on what I should put value on in life. And as someone quite nihilistic, it really made me appreciate just being alive oh my god am I gonna start crying why are my eyes burning it's just an incredible book it's um it really had a very very big impact on me and I think it found me at quite a right place in my life it is very very heavy though so I would say just be cautious going into it because yeah it is quite rough the second book on my list I would probably say is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood this book has weirdly impacted me the more I've got older especially with recent news like Trump's election and the Taliban's rule on women in Afghanistan what seems like such an unrealistic dystopian book is actually today's reality and it just angers and upsets me the way that women are treated in this world to be honest. It also made me realise the political power that books can have which is so important. And for the third book, I'm going to go down a different route with this book but hear me out because it really did impact me, was Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. I hate to say it but this is generally the book that ignited my passion for reading as a girl. I hand on heart can tell you that I would not be sitting here making YouTube videos now if it was not for this book. Yes, it's objectively terribly written, but you know what? It had a huge impact on me and it literally altered my brain chemistry. So here we are. What is your perfect snack and book combination? I don't really eat when I read. I don't really like getting the pages messy. Actually, you know what? That's such a lie. I literally read whilst I'm having my dinner. Go hard or go home, apparently. So that's my answer. I will have a full dinner whilst reading Twilight. <laughs> What's your favourite book in every genre? Do you know how many genres there are? I will be sat here for an hour answering this question. I think I might make this question into a solo YouTube video, so watch this space.
what category of books do you go to most? I guess fiction in general, but I guess that includes a lot of things, such as contemporary, historical, adventure, thriller. I would like to say that the older I've gotten, I do read a wider variety of books because you just never know what genre you might discover that you might absolutely love. Like, for example, I realized the past year that I absolutely love survival thrillers, and that is something I'm definitely wanting to read more of. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't really have like a specific genre. I'm just very open to whatever looks good. In which book character do you recognize yourself? the most? Oh, this is a good question, but incredibly hard because there are so many book characters out there. For a lot of my life, I did actually see myself in Luna Lovegood from Harry Potter. She's a bit odd to some people, but she's just very honest and kind, which are traits I think I would like to have. But now that I'm thinking about it, I wouldn't say I resonate with her anymore. Katniss Everdeen seems to come to mind now. I'm angry at the state of the world and I actually just kind of prefer being left on my own. And I deny all my love interests from coming close to me because I can be defensive. But that's a conversation for another time, preferably with my therapist. <laughs> if you could reread one book for the rest of your life, what would it be? The Secret History by Donna Tartt. One of my favourite books of all time. It is just an absolute masterpiece. I yap about this book so much on my channel, so I will not go into it again here. But this book is amazing and it's also very big. So if I just had to reread this book, then I would have a lot of content out of it. See, smart. <laughs> give a specific book recommendation for the end of autumn. I actually recently made a whole video on book recommendations for autumn, which I will link down below for you to watch. I'm hoping there's a book in there that will take your fancy. If you had a bookshop, what would it be named? Well, as mentioned, I absolutely love plants. So if I was to have a bookshop, I would have it. So it would be one of those like bookstores that has like a gazillion plants in them. So maybe something like botanical books or books and bloom or blooming books? Blooming books. I quite like that one. Yeah, let's go with that one. What author would you do a book reading at your shop? Otessa Moshveg, I think, would be an incredible person to do a reading. Purely because I have like a million questions to ask her, I really want to pick her brains on her writing style because I absolutely love the way she writes. And also probably an obvious one is Donna Tartt. Like, I've listened to her audiobooks and the way she talks is so mesmerizing. The way she articulates herself and also her accent is just so addicting to listen to. I could listen to her for hours. So yeah, I would definitely invite those two people to do a reading at my shop in first instance. How has your taste in books changed over time? I definitely read a lot more non-fiction and memoirs now compared to what I did a few years ago. I also think adventure and action used to be my absolute jam when I was a teenager. Which is interesting because I actually still read those books now that I think about it. Like, I literally reread Harry Potter and Percy Jackson last year. But I think now my horizons have just broadened. Like, I will read a wider range of genres, but I don't necessarily think that I've stopped reading certain books that I used to, if that makes sense. Imagine you meet a stranger. He tells you he has never read a book, but he will read one you recommend to him. Which book is it? Never read a book before? What the hell? God, I don't want to overwhelm him by suggesting like 1984 or something. Mm, I would probably recommend like a children's book if he's never read a book before. Honestly, Holes by Louis Sacha is like an absolute solid book, I think. It was one of the first like proper novels I think I ever read because we read it in school where we analysed and discussed it. And that was like the first book I think I read where I realised just how cool and complex books can be. So yeah, if you've never read a book before in your life, I would recommend that one. And finally, the very last question I got asked is, what are the books you haven't read yet but feel like you would love for some reason? Honestly, so many. Like, at the moment, my TBR list is currently at around 400 books, which is insane. But I have three that particularly spring to mind when I think about them. Firstly, I think Yellow Face by R.F. Quang. I've just heard amazing things about this book, and it's about race and the publishing industry, and I really love this author, especially reading her other book, Babel. I think my second book would be Man's Search for Meaning by Victor Frank. I believe that this is a non-fiction piece of a man that has survived the Holocaust. I just know that this book is going to emotionally and mentally destroy me, which obviously I'm going to like it. But I think I'm just working up the courage to get up to it because I just think I need to read this book at the right time. And I would say my third book, which I've been really meaning to get around to, is Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. I haven't read a suspenseful thriller in a while and I've only just heard amazing things about this book, so I really want to get around to this one and read it because I genuinely think that I would like it and and apparently the ending has left everyone shook and I like books where I cannot guess what happens so yeah there we go
And there you have it. Those are all the questions that you guys have asked me. I hope you guys got to know me a little bit better through this video. I mean, I usually answer questions about me in the comments anyway, but it's probably nice for you to have them all compact in one video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please drop a like down below. It really helps my channel out. And if you're new here, please subscribe. I make new videos about books every single Tuesday. Feel free to also give me a follow on Goodreads. I update what books I read in real time. And also feel free to follow me on my Instagram. I post more personal stuff on there, but I also post post books as soon as I finish reading them so you can see what they're about and also what I've rated them. Again, thank you so much for the 5,000 subscribers. I actually think I'm at 6,000 subscribers whilst I'm feeling this, which is absolutely crazy. I love you all so much and I forever appreciate and cherish every single one of you. And yeah, just thank you so much. Love you lots and I will see you in the next one. Bye.